in some areas I think cattle farming would uh, would still continue. I think in areas like this there's no doubt that the topsoil horizons will be lost um, and they take a very long time to recover. In areas where there's a little more rainfall and in areas particularly where sheep are raised, semi-arid rangelands are a, are a great case in point. I think we're looking at a situation that's absolutely non-recoverable in the long term. We get to the situation where with more trees being removed for more pasture, more holes being sunk, with overgrazing being intense, the remaining vegetation communities will go. Goats are being introduced now into areas where sheep can't make a go of it. The goats are eating the woody weeds that can survive sheep grazing but not goat grazing. We're getting to a situation where all plant cover is being removed. The topsoil is blowing away. There have been recent dust storms in the big cities in eastern Australia as a direct consequence of mismanagement of the land over long periods. I think we can see, expect to see long-term degradation to the point where vast areas, millions of hectares, are completely unusable for the production industry and for native species. Why go down that path when we've got alternatives? It just makes no sense. We've got options. We must explore them. I think there are, there are a, number of, a number of answers to that. I think one is that historically we've always seen Australia as being a land to be tamed. This is, this is Europeans who have this value, this, uh, this impression of the land. It's, it's there to be used, abused, exploited. It's not there because it's got any intrinsic value in its own right. And I think it's uh, perhaps in Europe where it is possible to till the land to uh, so that every square centimetre is used, maybe that works. But in a land like Australia, where the rainfall is unpredictable, where soils are impoverished, where wildfire is a frequent, um, is a frequent event, we have to realise that using the land in the same way as we do in Europe isn't working. It has never really worked, apart from perhaps the, when the first livestock were taken in and ate out the, the biomass that was there at the time. It's never really worked. It's not productive. There are a few exceptions, but over the vast majority of the continent, it doesn't work. We've got to get away from the mindset that this is an area that can be used as open rangeland forever. It can't be, and we've seen areas that have been degraded to the point where they are no longer usable. So there's a historical component. People have been here for a long time. The pioneers, the pastoral pioneers, are venerated in our, in our, in our ballads, our poetry, our paintings, our literature. Henry Lawson spoke of it. Banjo Patterson, it's, it's part, of a, part of Australian culture, part of the psyche. For the people who've been on the land for a long time, it's very difficult to think of doing anything else. It's their lives, it's their lifestyle. If they're to move, then it's going to mean government assistance to help them to do other things, to retrain, to think about moving elsewhere, or if they stay, to think about doing other things with their properties, perhaps from a, more from a conservation and ecotourism point of view. So these are difficult things. The government doesn't seem to be particularly interested in listening because yeah, the bush is... Uh, not in their backyard, it's a long way from Canberra, it's a long way from all of the state capitals, so it's, there's no great impetus. Not so many people come to, the, come to the inland to see and appreciate it, so there's less awareness of what's going on. I think even the conservation movement, with its focus very much on the forests, has neglected to look at the arid zone. The arid zone is where the extinctions of mammals have been, not in the forests. We've lost the thylacine from Tasmania, but apart from that, no other forest dwelling mammals have gone. But the forest, the, the mammals that have gone, have been, for the most part, the occupants of this sort of environment, the hopping mice. We've lost 10 species of native rodents in the last 200 years, all from these environments. We've lost 10 species of marsupials, mostly from the arid and the semi arid areas, many more on the brink. This is where we have to look. I think it's just when people begin to realise and appreciate that most of Australia is like this, it's most of it is semi-arid or arid, and, uh, and begin to appreciate that we've, we've had a long history of mismanagement. I think appreciate the good things, take on board the, uh, the, the bad things that we've done, look at, uh, look at other ways of managing, and government must come on board to allow the changes to be effected. It's too difficult, I think, to ask the people on the land at the moment to change, they can't do it without some sort of guarantee it's going to work. The government's got to come to the party and, and help out. And I think the information is there now to show how it can be done, 
and I think the, uh, the information is there to the, to the degree where we, where we have to demand this of the government. I think the sooner the better. There are parts of Western Australia where the removal of trees for, uh, for, uh, for agriculture, for, for stock grazing has been so great that it's going to be difficult to, uh, to remove all the salt in the topsoil, it's going to be difficult to re-establish green plants. Um, areas like that, it's too late. There are parts of New South Wales where it's too late. So really, we have to do it now. The time frame should be this year, next year at the latest, five years at the, at the very, very most. We have to do it right now. There is there's no delay. Yeah. <laughs>